Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Jung from Bluefish Pediatrics, and I'm here to talk to you today about vomiting and diarrhea, two, two of the most common problems that we see in pediatrics, also known as gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis can be caused by many different things, of which viruses are by far the most common, making up about 75% of cases, followed by bacteria, parasite, and other causes. Of the viruses, there are many different viruses which can give you gastroenteritis. Number one, rotavirus. Number two, norovirus. Number three, sapovirus. Number four, astrovirus. Number five, adenovirus. And there are some other viruses as well. Some of these viruses are most common during the summertime. Some of them predominate in the wintertime. And some of them are seen year round, which is definitely what we see in pediatrics. Kids coming in with vomiting and diarrhea all throughout the year. So when your child has gastroenteritis, what is the typical course? Usually your child will have vomiting for about one to two days. They will also have diarrhea lasting five to seven days, but that may actually go as long as one to two weeks or longer at times. 42% of kids will have fever and about 12% of kids will have some cramping. So when your child has gastroenteritis, when do we as doctors worry and when do you need to see the doctor? Number one, if your child is under six months of age, it is a good idea to be seen by your doctor to make sure there's not a more serious cause of vomiting and diarrhea happening. Number two, if you see any visible blood in the stool, it is generally a good idea to be seen, especially if you're seeing a quarter size of blood or more in two or three consecutive stools, it probably is a good idea to have them checked out. If you are seeing a small amount of blood, it may be from irritation to your anus from the diarrhea, in which case seeing your doctor may not be necessary, but the more blood you see and the more diapers you see it in, the more likely it needs to be checked out. Of course, if you're seeing any unrelenting vomiting and diarrhea that is not improving over the course of several hours and you're starting to get worried about your child becoming dehydrated, they should also be checked out by your doctor. And if you're seeing diarrhea lasting for more than 14 days, it may be possible that the diarrhea and vomiting is being caused by something other than a virus, in which case seeing the doctor to get some tests done may be necessary. The biggest thing that we worry about really is the dehydration. So when do, you worry, when do we worry that your child is becoming dehydrated? Number one, if your child is having very low activity and really laying around listless, not doing anything, not wanting to play, not making good eye contact, that is a child that probably needs to be checked out. No urine output for, output for more than eight hours is also concerning that your child may not have enough fluid and so is no longer making urine. And dry mouth, lips, Sunken eyes, clammy skin, those are some of the other signs that we look for to see whether or not a child is dehydrated. But the most important things would be the activity level and the urine output. As long as your child is peeing and they are active and playful, we are not that worried about your kid. But if they are laying around and not making a good amount of urine, then, then they need to be checked out. When is testing necessary? Generally speaking, for vomiting and diarrhea, testing is not necessary. But if your child has blood in the stool, or they have diarrhea lasting more than seven to 14 days, you probably wanna see your doctor to get some testing done. In terms of treatment, the most important thing is rehydrating your child to make sure that they are not getting dehydrated. And the easiest way to do that is the rehydration protocol. Like any other muscle in your body, your stomach needs some time to rest. So if your child is vomiting, you wanna give them about 30 minutes of a break after they vomited, after 30 minutes, then you can do one teaspoon of either Pedialyte if your child is under one year of age or Gatorade if your child is over one year of age. And you can do one teaspoon every five minutes for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes of doing that, if your child has not vomited, then you can move towards giving them either one bottle of Pedialyte or one cup of Gatorade and let them drink freely on their own. If they're able to hold that down, then you can move forward to their normal solid food diet. Along the way, if they throw up, go ahead and start all over from the beginning again. And if they fail the rehydration protocol twice, then it is a good idea to touch base with your doctor. While there are a lot of medications out there for vomiting and diarrhea, we generally do not recommend using medication. Of course, if you fail your rehydration protocol twice, it may be a good idea to use some Zofran, which is probably the most useful medication. And Zofran, while it is helpful, should be a second line treatment after the rehydration protocol. And the reason is Zofran, although it is quite safe, can have some side effects such as lightheadedness, dizziness, and sometimes headache. And so like any other medication, you wanna use that uh, judiciously. And Zofran generally should be only used in children who are six months of age or older. And 
The studies show that usually a single dose is adequate. Doing a second and third dose of Zofran usually does not help with hydration status. Probiotics, while they are very popular these days, there's very weak data supporting the use of probiotics in viral gastroenteritis, so we generally don't recommend it. Additionally, probiotics are not regulated by the FDA, so there are some safety concerns. An emodium is an anti-motility agent which essentially holds everything inside of you. And when you have a vomiting, when you have vomiting and diarrhea from a viral gastroenteritis or a really any other cause, you don't want to hold that within you. You want all of that to come out of you. And holding that in can lead to more complications, so we never recommend any emodium. And fenergan, which used to be used about 15, 20 years ago, uh, is uh, rarely used these days. And the reason is that can lead to some serious complications such as respiratory depression. So as you can see, generally speaking, medications are not necessary, but every once in a while, uh, Zofran may be helpful if you are failing the rehydration protocol. In terms of diet, it's actually best to get back on your regular diet as soon as possible. The sooner you get back on your regular diet, the sooner you can get colonized with your healthy bacteria, the sooner your intestines can get back to normal. You may have heard of people using the brat diet, which is bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. Or you may have heard that people recommend stopping milk uh, so that you are lactose free for a while. While both of those are not that harmful, they are also not that helpful. Generally speaking, getting your children back on the regular diet is the best thing. And if you want to have a uh, leaning, you can use complex carbohydrates, lean meats, yogurts, fruits and veggies. Basically a healthy diet is the best diet for them. And when can your kids return back to school? Number one, when they no longer have vomited for 24 hours. Number two, if they're in diapers, when they are no longer leaking out of their diaper. Number three, if they're potty trained, when they no longer have any accidents. And number four, as long as the number of stools that they are having is no greater than two stools above baseline, uh, then they are re ready to return back to school. So in summary, remember that viruses are by far the most common cause of gastroenteritis, and vomiting may last one to two days, diarrhea five to seven days. The most important thing to look out for is dehydration, and generally speaking, testing is not necessary. Your best treatment is the rehydration protocol. Medications in general are not necessary other than perhaps Zofran and getting them back on their regular diet is the most important thing and, uh, and helps them on the road to recovery. Hopefully this will help you the next time your child has vomiting and diarrhea.